Tell yourself. It's a very weird. T3. Media. Hey guys, welcome to Talking Through the Media. Is your home for entertainment news and reviews for fans by fans. Remember to like and subscribe. Smash that like and subscribe button and send us those questions and comments because we want to hear them. I'm your host, Chris Fagan, and I'm riding solo today, guys. So um, I, I wanted to get through this real fast. I, I'm sorry this this this, this did not come. Uh, on schedule on Wednesday like it normally does where uh, a day late a dollar short uh, because we had some technical difficulties I, I'm just I'm just gonna be honest with you we did the whole episode and none of the sound was there remember to stay active uh, in this community uh, I want you to send us those topics that, that you want us to talk about and uh, tell us uh, the things you want to talk or just trending topics uh, for why is that trending by emailing us at mail at t3medias.com don't forget you can also catch this episode on podcast uh, version on uh, for iTunes and on SoundCloud so if you want to catch that just uh Become a subscriber to those uh, platforms as well to listen to us. Uh, don't forget to send us a review as well. Just real quick, just run through some uh, trending topics. Uh, so Paramount Pictures signed a deal with Will Smith and Kevin Hart to re remake the comedy classic Trains, Planes, and Automobiles. Cardi B had a one-on-one -on -one with Joe Biden this past week and then made bigger news when she got into a back-and-forth Twitter war with Tiger King documentary star Carol Baskins. And then uh, Tig Notoro is replacing Chris D'Elia, if I'm saying that name correctly, in Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. Uh, which one of those stand out to me the most? Well, it was tr for me, it was trains, planes, and automobiles. The question of, has, hasn't Will Smith and Kevin Hart done a movie together before and I thought about like no they, they they have not we googled it right there on the spot Amy and I and it was like no they have it but it's weird it feels like they have all these movies that Kevin Hart has done with The Rock it feels like they that that you could have put Will Smith in any of those movies it kind of felt to me like they've already worked together before I'm like why is this news they've done it I'm like no this is the first project together so that that was pretty exciting then the question hit because people were thinking, like, obviously, Will Smith was going to play, um, uh, was it uh, Steve Martin? Is it Steve Martin? Hold, I, I, I'm remembering this correctly, right? The Steve Martin character, like the straight man, uh, uh, the, the family uh, man character. Was he going to play that role? And obviously, Kevin Hart was going to play, uh, well, Will Smith playing Steve Martin's character. Kevin Hart should obviously be playing uh, John Candy's uh, character. Rest in peace, John Candy. Then I thought about it. I'm like, but wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be interesting if they flipped it? We're used to Kevin Hart playing that uh, the the comic relief, right? Uh, we're used to seeing Will Smith doing drama. But after the upside, I thought it would to me, it would be way more interesting if they flipped it. I mean, on face off, uh, they flipped the coin. To see who would play who, uh, which role the majority of the time in that classic film. Maybe they'll do the same thing. But if you ask me, people are like on the fence of whether or not they like the idea of re remaking this classic. I have no problem with remakes. It doesn't destroy your copy of the original. Trains, planes, and automobiles will always be the classic. Now, what I'm the only thing I'm worried about is how they're going to handle that falling to sleep on a, uh, falling to sleep on the highway scene you drive you're on you're going the wrong way that's the only thing i'm one if they gotta crush that scene that's my favorite scene that's the scene and uh those aren't pillows scene but what if kevin hart played the uh the family man the, the dad that, that's trying to get home and will smith played the the bumbling guy who always got them in trouble that to me that raised the sex uh comment below let me know what you guys think about that and if you want to talk about uh cardi b and, you know, getting into it with Carol Baskins again. Then look, she said what she she was worried about tigers being abused or animals being abused on the uh, the WAP uh, video. And Cardi B was like, ain't nobody listening to you. Everybody knows you killed your husband. All right. OK, I laughed. I thought it was funny. But for the people who were like, OK, there was no real evidence that she did it. You know, Cardi B is just trying to uh, ignore what Carol Baskins was saying just to uh, hit her with another insult, that, that same old tight insult. But look, Carol, you don't don't 
you can't you you you're not your hands are too too small to box with a god like like Cardi B right now. I'm, I'm sorry, one on one, no, you're not gonna. I don't think you're gonna win that fight verbally. Now, activist wise, maybe, but verbally, no, it's a totally different beast than you're used to. All right, moving on, guys. Let us know what you guys uh, think about that. Comment below if you want to talk about any of those uh, topics and we might talk about it on We Got Your Mail. So the first real main topic uh, that we want to talk about uh, came in. And so ever since uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle moved to California earlier this year, rumors have swirled that they have had plans to gain a foothold in Hollywood. They now seem to be taking steps to do that. According to sources, the couple has been quietly shopping in idea for a project around town variety has learned what is what is it that they're going to do so like you said the in variety the rumors have already been swirling around will they get into uh tv and whatnot me and a amy when we were doing the show we thought at first maybe a reality show would be the idea we thought about that and then and then in real time we debunked it because it's kind of beneath them i mean I mean, they're OK. They're not beholden to the, the royal family anymore, you know, uh, with the, the the stuffiness of, you know, uh, even though you're not with, uh, you know, in the castle and all that stuff, you still play by our rules. And you know, we're not doing that. But at this point in their lives uh, with I mean, they don't need the money. They even even though they're getting less than what they were before, they they broke away from the royal family. They're still getting they're still well off. They're not they're not uh, in need to do like. Uh, MTV reality show style kind of uh, Kim Kardashians and keeping up. This isn't keeping it up with uh, with the uh, with the Royals. It's not going to happen. It, I thought it would. But then I was like, oh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but then we thought, what if producing? I mean, podcasting, there's uh, I, I could see them getting a foothold in Hollywood uh, on a production level. Maybe maybe that's uh, what what they meant by by uh, by getting a foothold, producing uh, documentaries, a, a documentary style reality uh, thing for for what they're going through makes more sense. Um, other kinds of projects, uh, raising awareness, things like that. Um, I felt like that made that makes more sense. Now, Megan uh, quit her lifestyle uh, and, and acting. She was already on a hit TV show right uh, when she uh, was getting married and, and was uh, stepping away from the uh, the Hollywood scene to focus on on her new role as, as a princess or as a duchess. And um, I could see her because she's a strong willed woman. I mean, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like saying like, no, I'm going back to work. I'm not just going to sit around and do nothing. So if they're going to get a foothold in Hollywood, maybe she's going to go back into acting. I would not doubt for one second that the opportunities and the doors or whatever that were closed to her before, after all the latest movements that's been going on, especially lately, I could I would be surprised if now her name isn't now in one of those uh, sought after, maybe not top five. Maybe she's now moved up into the top. 10 for um a a a black woman uh or uh, being uh considered for uh, a role that and in, in a role that maybe before she wouldn't be uh considered in uh before because like you got you have your top five and you got your holly berry uh your um gabrielle unions and whatnot it used to, it used to be a situation where these people would be where these roles were so few and far in between that they would fight a lot for them and the same names and faces would always be getting those roles when hey we're looking for a, a, a woman uh, of color for these well what's what's gabriel union what's holly berry doing now you know uh you know those same names i gotta say maybe she's not in the top five but with now with her with their status now i can see her now in the top 10 of discussion and probably getting close to me if she's not if she, uh, then you, i wouldn't be surprised if she was number six on that list now moving up and eventually depending on what the first couple of projects she does would definitely be in the top five in the future depending on how well it uh, goes but let's see let's see how it goes that's just how i feel about it what do you guys think about that uh do you think uh they're looking for a reality show do you think they're looking for some kind of documentary is producing the only thing that they're uh gonna consider or do you think uh, megan is like i'm getting back to work 
do you know who I is? Do you know who my stepdad is? You know, you know who my 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 in laws are. I mean, my like my stepdad. My, you know who my in laws are. And uh, she's gonna use that to uh, move up into that top five on that list for lead fem- uh, female roles in the uh, in, in the future. Maybe, maybe not. Let me know. Comment below, guys. Let me know what you guys think, and we might talk about it on we got your mail now let's move on to the next topic of discussion okay so in july amc theaters and universal pictures rocked the industry with the historic deal to collapse the traditional 90 day theatrical window to as little as 17 days before offering first run features on premium video on demand in an exclusive new survey from performance research in partnership with full circle research nearly twice as many people said that they would wait the full 90 days to see a must-see movie at home then uh, expressed as desire to see it first in a theater then expressed desire to see it first in a theater according to the survey only 12 percent said that they would definitely see a movie in a theater first if there was a 90 day wait to watch it at home on premium video on demand at a 20 dollar price point another 15 percent said they would probably watch first in the theater. By contrast, 21% said they would probably wait to watch at home and 23% said they would definitely wait. Now, if, if I'm, I'm looking at these charts and I'm seeing a consistency, you can kind of see it behind the graphic of, um, of wonder woman uh there so the reason why i put that there is because when you're reading that when you read the whole uh article they're just throwing the numbers at you 15 percent said this but it basically uh, broke down to this a majority of the people who were assessed and polled in this topic said based on the movie wonder woman would you would you rather go to the movie theaters and uh, would you rather wait until things kind of get better and go to the movie theaters or you well, let's do what Mulan did. Let's just bite the bullet and go straight to VLD. No, 53%, 54%, something like that said, no, uh, yeah, 53%. No, I would rather wait. Do what you got to do. Get the theaters in, uh, in shape. I want to go to the movies again. Same for Tenet, 54%, 50% more. It was always the majority. Every, every movie, major, every major movie, when you're talking about a movie that's at a, a higher budget, for example, like these movies, like Tenet, people are like, no, I, I don't, I, I don't want to spend twenty bucks, you know, to watch this at home. If I'm going to spend that twenty dollars, if I got a date, if it's me for solo, I don't care what the situation is. I want the movie experience first. The way these films were shot, they were uh, meant to be on a big screen. That quality sound, you can't get it. You can't ma- You can't uh, uh, mirror it. You can't mimic it at home. No, no, no matter how great your system is, no matter how great your speakers are, no matter how close they are to your ears and probably making you deaf, you're going you're not going to get the same experience. You're not going to get that IMAX screen. You're not going to. And there, there are people who want to have the the experience first, that big screen I have to censor myself on that right in their face, especially in IMAX for some of these movies like Tenet. So it was overwhelming. Now closing that window and making it smaller for you know they're, they're going to be a theater for like a, a week and a half and then coming home it's like that that that's gonna kill the movie uh experience it's gonna it's, it's gonna hurt it's it's going to hurt you should not close that window that's how i feel about it yes this pandemic is messed up there's a lot of movies that it feels like you can't wait for too long bill and ted uh three is uh for example they're um going to video on demand but alamo theaters is uh buying out screens and uh because there's now that, that now that collapse has happened for that since they technically went to they're going to video on demand now they're in that situation where you know how you can buy a screen like for a personal screening and then just pick your movie so they're doing it for them yeah, you know, for their screens themselves so they're i guess they're taking the hit whatever it costs maybe five hundred thousand i don't know how much it costs to get the rights to do a private screening of it of a video a movie that's gone already gone on uh demand or scheduled to go on demand alamo draft house uh is that Al- yeah, alamo draft house theaters is uh is doing that for bill and ted and get this uh, look it up free 
their screening of it is uh is is free they're doing free screens of it so what you're doing is i guess they're taking a hit of it. they're trying to get people in the theaters trying to um to i guess fill up those seats and just get people uh into uh, uh i guess to order food and things like that because alamo draft house is uh is mainly like a um a dining uh facility so they the majority of their money i guess they did the math on it we can take the hit on this it's probably cheaper since it's on uh on demand video now so it's like hey you just pretty much saved us uh the money that it would cost to actually run it on a on our actual theater theater theatrical run so maybe it's cheaper that way so I thought that was pretty cool that uh, that they're going to uh, do that. But what do you guys think? Let me know. Uh, put in the box below. Comment uh, on your thoughts on this whole thing about do you think they should reduce the, the time between theater to VOD, uh, especially during this pandemic? Or do you think they should just keep things the way they are for the movies that are higher budget like uh, Tenet, Wonder Woman, for example? Do you think it's worth the wait? Hey, I don't want to see those movies at home first. I want to see them, but I want to have the experience in the theater first and i want that experience to uh, to be stretched out that 90 uh day three month to six month, you know window before it's offered at home uh, it's 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 a it's a it's a treasure it's an experience that I, uh, in the theater that i want to have in that uh, th- uh that theater uh and and experience it there and i'm willing to wait if that's your uh, message put it in the box below and let us know uh, uh your thoughts on it or if you're the opposite maybe you're like no bring it home bring it home as fast as you can i'd rather be on my couch and uh and watching it there and uh just let us know either way uh, and we'll talk about it on we got your mail so the, uh, the next uh top the last topic uh that we uh had was even nominees carrie washington and reese witherspoon are confused about the 2020 emmys while we do know Jimmy Kimmel will return as host and the now virtual show will once again air at, on ABC. That's as far as the, uh, that's been confirmed. Details go at this point. Leaving nominees like, with, with, like, blah, blah, like Witherspoon and Washington wondering what they'll be doing on their end. While both stars have a chance of accepting an Emmy Award coming next month, how they would is a different question. So the question i guess is what 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 is going on with the emmy so hosted by jimmy uh kimmel he's, he's returning as host it's going to be virtual now we're right now uh as, as uh you know this week they're starting um conventions for um the the presidential nominees and for this week and next week so they are doing different things for how they're going to cover their convention they can't do it live and it's as as Whatever uh, scenes that they have groups in, there's a lot of social distancing on there. So most of it is virtual cameras that have been sent and equipment that's been sent to people to record from their homes. So the question is, are they going to get are the Emmys going to get these people who it's their job always to be in front of camera. Now, you've seen a lot of people do these Zoom meetings like uh, people of a certain cast of a certain film or tv shows they'll they'll get together every now and then they'll talk about certain things but this is the emmys are you asking these actors to turn those cameras on and and sit down and and like have a zoom meeting and wait for their name to be called and possibly win an award or not win an award are okay are you who what what kind of how what kind of these speeches are, are going to be <laughs> i would assume that you would minimize production as as much as you could tell the the winners that they've won and um uh, like the day before or whatever a couple of days before give them their award have them give their speech and maybe do some funny stuff with people who might not have won. Uh, maybe maybe have them do some funny things where they like, oh, like you know, like pretend like it's virtual or something. I would assume something like that. But if it's live streaming and, and things like that, I mean, how how are are like Reese Witherspoon and uh, Carrie Washington, for example, how they're going to be presenting uh, here and there and and uh, and possibly accepting an award? How is that going to work? What's going to happen uh, with that? Is there uh, is there an award guy that's going to uh, Uber up to their house, hand them their award, they, they accept it? Or are they going to go to a um, uh, a stadium or 
an auditorium kind of a, a thing, maybe social distance and kind of accept. It. I don't know. It, it's it's very confusing. Uh, it's happening this week. I mean, I'm not sorry. It's happening uh, next month on the like around the 20th of September or whatnot. They've got time to figure it out. Um, let's see what they do. I, maybe they're going to take cues on what's going on uh, right now with these conventions and, and take their ideas. Uh, DC fandom that uh, con- uh, that uh, convention that they're having with DC with everybody speculating that Mark Ham- uh, uh, not Mark Hamill uh, Henry Cavill will be uh, Mark Hamill as Superman uh, Henry Cavill was probably going to be announced that he's coming back as Superman everybody's hoping for they if I saw it correctly they have this digital stage where a person like in the green screen uh, comes out and they um, and it's like uh, augmented reality that was a great idea. I wish these people that are doing the conventions, um, if they had time, uh, as they were struggling whether or not they were going to host it live or not, or or in a stadium, uh, would have thought of that before. An augmented reality kind of a thing. But then again, that's that's higher production. Uh, it's it's a totally different uh, beast. It's being, uh, but it's it's being operated by Hollywood. You got the technology. So I don't know. I, an augmented reality style kind of a thing where you virtually can put people in the seats and something like that. Maybe that's something I'm thinking about. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. Maybe it's not that crucial. I'm not even worried about it. Let's say, hey, turn your webcam on. Thank you for my award. Like, thank you for this award. Right, I'm going back to bed. Yeah, that's it. You know, and uh, and just call it a wrap. Maybe that's what they're gonna do. Uh, let us know what you guys think about those uh, that was those ideas I threw around there. Does it make sense to to even worry about it that much? Hey, look, just just get your award and just call it a day. I don't think that many. I don't know how many people are even going to be watching. The Emmys are known for uh, their entertainment uh, value and and whatnot. The award itself, I, I mean, if you like it, I love it. That's great. Uh, it's not it's not the Oscars, so I, I'm not. People aren't that worried about it, but maybe I don't know. Maybe the Emmys are your favorite uh, show. What do you guys think about that? And uh, I guess let us know in the box below and we'll talk about it on We Got Your Mail. So the last thing that so we always throw a uh, We Got Your Mail uh, topic in every episode. And today is no exception. So the on Twitter, a friend of mine, uh, Alicia Grosso, posted a question. I thought it was an interesting uh, one. And. I thought I would talk about it on uh, on the show. So what movie do you think is amazing, but you will never watch again? I've seen this question posted a couple of times uh, before with the similar answer every uh, time. Um, and today was no exception. Uh, at Tara Yarla said Uncut Jim. Never have I felt so anxious in the theater. That was great that you got to see that in the theater. I saw it here at home. Uh Joe Hart's Hart's Heart said three movies, Mother, Hereditary and Midsommar. I've seen the first two. I still have not seen Midsommar, but for some reason, those are movies. Now, let me just talk about Mother for a quick second. When I figured out what it was, what it was doing, like how uh, what, how uh, biblical it was based and whatnot, there was that when when they got to Jesus, that's that's the part that i mean if the whole movie was so confusing and, and it was weird uh and and it, it you're, you're either gonna really love it or really hate it type of a style it's, it's there's a hardly a middle uh for that kind of a movie but when it got to the the child and what happened to the baby oh that was the part that was like i'm never watching this movie again <laughs> i didn't enjoy it but even if i did enjoy it that was the scene i was like never again never and i went to a theater and saw that uh hereditary i saw it for the first time on uh at home i was like i gotta see this movie everybody keeps talking about it um that decapitation scene that was it that was the scene man i can tell that's probably the the part that really gets a lot of people midsummer i don't know what that what scene or scenes uh that do it for people but i'm curious to find out um Let's see. A lot of people are agreeing with at KRS Jams uh, Requiem of a Dream. I have not seen that, but I've heard that one come up a lot. But the vast majority of people have voted for 12 Years a Slave. That seems to be the one the topic that uh, it's still kind of I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm split on this. So for education purposes, right, we I, I don't I'm not a, I'm not for 
um, erasing history because you're uncomfortable with it. I'm uncomfortable with schools not talking about the Civil War, slavery, things like that, because the teacher might feel uncomfortable or it might make the students ask questions that the teacher might not uh, uh, feel comfortable asking on a personal level. I don't give I don't care about your personal uh, problems with it. It's history. It's the truth. Teach it. Now, now we shouldn't lean on movies to be um, uh, educators and whatnot. There's documentaries and stuff for that, but for the most part, that's why it's, oh, I'm, that's why I'm okay with movies taking liberties uh, with uh, adjusting facts and whatnot to make the best movie and whatnot. As long as they're not saying this is 100 percent not what happened. So a movie like Twelve Years a Slave was very graphic, very uh, honest in details, and it didn't it didn't mix words. And so people, a lot of people feel squeamish about that. Like, you know, people feel like uh, guilty. I mean, it wasn't me. I wasn't there at that time. I don't think that way and, and, and whatnot. So I don't I just don't want to talk about it. I, I understand that. I get that when it comes to movies. But what I get upset with is now it's, it's, it's been bleeding into uh, education. So now those lines are being blurred. And that's what I get uh, upset with people's feelings about uh, not want to seeing not wanting to see it on screen. Uh, like the Passion of the Christ, it was a, it was pre- people were like that was pretty much a movie about a guy getting tortured for two hours, and I, I don't want to watch that. I can go to church and listen to that. I didn't need to see it on screen, uh, but I'm okay with people feeling like that when it comes to their entertainment. I'm not okay with it when it comes to education. So a lot of people uh, on on that uh and i asked her i said listen hey can i use this question for my uh, we got your mail topic she said yes go for it and um alicia uh grasso uh, uh editorial lead at uh, adam insider and she's a film critic as well you might have seen her on collider uh and go so go check out uh, follow her i uh, appreciate you uh Alyssa, for letting me uh borrow your uh, your awesome tweet there guys but that's it guys uh that's the show thanks for watching uh did you like what you saw support the, the channel if you uh become, become a subscriber and send us those likes send us your questions send us your comments uh for us to read on we got your mail you can follow us on twitter facebook instagram at t3 media i'm your host chris fagan you can find me at Chris Fagan, 1980. Yes, that was the year that I was born. I know I don't look a day over 25. I mean, don't. It doesn't crack. It's just the way it is. I'm sorry. If you like it, I love it. But uh, you can always uh, hit me up uh, there if you want to ask me questions or at T3 Media's if you have a topic you want us to talk about it, and uh, we'll discuss it here on the show. Don't forget as well if you want to talk about training topics that you want us to put at the top of the show, mail us mail at t3medias.com. Uh that's the show guys. Appreciate you for uh bearing with me. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Sorry for the lateness of, of the of the show. Uh but this was streamed in front of a uh, live studio audience of uh, augmented reality. And uh, until next time guys. Peace. Very weird. T3 T3, T3, T3 Media. Through the media. So unbelievably funny. Like one of those people you just Obviously, he's hilarious, but you, you, I feel like he's been in so much good stuff and like growing up on Seinfeld, you kind of take for granted just how funny is he is. And to sort of be the standout funny on, you know, one of the funniest sitcoms of all time.